What the hell is this? I added a scene where you get shot. I'm not letting you kill me off in the third act. What if there's a sequel? A sequel? What am I, a hack? Hello and welcome to episode 226 of the Mark and Me podcast. As always, I'm your host Mark. Now for me, today's episode is absolutely huge. Personally, if you've ever listened to Mark and Me or skip to the end, you will know how much I love and respect the View Askew universe. Kevin Smith is my favourite filmmaker of all time. During college and university, I was obsessed with his work. I thought Clerks was one of the best debuts I'd ever seen and I absolutely worship Chase and Amy. Dogma is an absolute masterpiece, I love Clerks too, and today we get to celebrate the release of the incredible end of this trilogy, Clerks 3. You will know by any of my previous episodes just how much I love and adore Kevin Smith's work. I actually launched the whole podcast with him as my first ever guest. He's the reason I started podcasting. And since then, I've been lucky enough to do interviews with Jason Mewes, Brian O'Halloran, Marilyn Gigliotti, Scott Mosier. But there was always one name that I was eager to get on, but it was never easily going to happen. But today, I'm absolutely thrilled to announce I'm joined by Randall himself, Jeff Anderson. And not only that, he's brought Dante with him. Yep, Brian O'Halloran makes a welcome return to Mark and me. And I can't wait to share this interview in just a couple of moments time. In true typical Mark and Me fashion, I always like to use the intro and every intro of Mark and Me to touch base and talk about my last guest. I always think it's a good opportunity to reflect on that episode and talk about the response. And I was blown away by the response for Terry Dwyer. It was great to talk to her. She was so open, so honest and so welcoming and one of my favourite guests that I've had on the podcast. And the response, even though it's only been out just a couple of days, has been incredible. So thank you to everyone that tuned in. But today, it's all about Clerks 3. I've been lucky enough to see this film, and I can tell you now, at the moment, it's my film of the year. Clerks 3 is an absolute masterpiece. For anyone that loves Kevin Smith's films and loves the Viewerskew universe, you're going to be blown away. It has so, so many nods to his previous work, and is just beautiful. It is full of heart, and I can't wait for people to start seeing this film. But before we get there, let's get to my interview now with the incredible... Randall and Dante themselves. Here's my interview with Jeff Anderson and Brian O'Halloran, and we talk all things view askew. I'm stuck in this pit, working for less than slave wages, working on my day off. The goddamn steel shutters are closed. I deal with every backward ass fuck on the planet. I smell like shoe polish. My ex girlfriend is catatonic after fucking a dead guy, and my present girlfriend has sucked 36 dicks. 37. Brian, Jeff, thank you so much for joining me today on the Mark and Me podcast. Thanks, Thanks for, for having, having us, Mark. Mark. Wow, that was perfectly in stereo. I love it. So we've been together um, too long. We share the same brain. That's insane. What I want to do today is get a really good idea of both of your experiences for Clerks Free. Now, Brian, can you tell me your initial reaction the moment Kevin sent you that script and how you kind of felt the moment you just finished it? Um. Well, I mean, uh, there was two iterations of a Clerks 3. There was one about eight, nine years ago that was sent that was a much darker tone. Um, yeah. And so uh, I remember the reaction to that script um, from us especially was kind of like, ooh, this is uh, this has gotten super serious. Real, Like, as, uh, as uh, I, I guess, um, 
Ron Burgundy would have said, "Woo, that escalated quickly. Um, <laughs> that kind of thing where that script got really dark really quick. Uh, this one, I thought uh, when he sent this one out, um, which he wrote uh, early in 2021, and we had it and ready to start shooting by the middle of 2021, um, was a much more heart-filled kind of feeling to it, This seeing the relationships that both Dante with Becky had developed and Dante with Randall, of course, and with Elias still being around and the Jay and Silent Bob characters still obviously the the orbit around the whole thing. It was very touching and very moving. And I was, uh, he was very enthusiastic, uh, Kevin was, about this this script. And uh, you couldn't help but want to be a part of it because it was such a, a really great bookend to what was the first film, which we started in 93 uh, to now. And what about you, Jeff? Are you kind of the same? I, I, I heard a lot of people have heard the first script because there's a reading in the, either in the stash or to a, an evening with Kevin. And a lot of people have said that they're really relieved that it's not so dark and not so kind of, it's not very nice. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, no, it's not very nice. Um, I, I think it's been well documented that it was a, a much darker script it didn't really feel like it belonged in the clerk's world. Um, and in talking to Kevin since that, you know, like you said, they have done a couple readings and uh, after the readings, I guess the crowd response or maybe just Kevin hearing it out loud, uh, he said he was relieved that he didn't do it. Um, you know, it, he also talked about uh, the script that we wound up shooting was a lot more personal, personal to him. And I think that's sort of what he'd brought to the original Clerks. You know, he worked in the store. He brought that in Clerks 2. He sort of brought the, the being a little lost in your 30s and not really knowing exactly where you're going. And uh, in Clerks 3, he talked about the original script that he wrote wasn't personal. It didn't mean anything, mean anything to him. He sort of just crafted this story. And I, I think what works about the new script, it is more personal. And Kevin was definitely more excited about it and a lot more invested in it. Um, so I think the script that we wound up shooting uh, was definitely the right script to shoot as opposed to the previous. And it's 16 years since Clerks 2, which makes me feel really old. And I just can't believe it. I'm like, Jesus Christ, has it been that long? And it's 28 years since Clerks 1, which just, I still can't get my head around. But <laughs> you, I mean, I know, I suppose, <laughs> yeah, you, I can't complain. But um, Brian, how did you feel about going back into the character, the mindset, and kind of hoping that the chemistry would still be there on set? Because it's been a long time. Normally, sequels, you get, you know, two or three years maximum between them. But this is a hell of a long wait. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've been fortunate that uh, Kevin had sprinkled me into other of his films, like the Jane Silent Bob reboot. I yeah. did play Dante in that. I also got to play, you know, Grant Hicks and 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 a few of the other uh, people in the film. And it was uh, easy to step into that character of Dante. And there's this weird, I don't know what it is, this kind of chemistry, simpatico. There's something about me and Jeff opposite each other with Kevin's dialogue in front of us. I mean, we just get along in, in real life that it works for this dialogue to work between the Dante and Randall characters. So we had a couple of days, they rented an, an Airbnb house for Kevin to stay the five to six weeks that we were shooting. And we would go over to his place and be at his dining room table. It'd be me and Jeff and Trevor and uh, Austin and Jay. And we'd just do table reads of the script and tweak things here and there or get suggestions about what we wanted to do. And it just, the chemistry was just there. And that's what's great. Same thing with Rosario Dawson. We, all, we literally only had her like a day and a half, two days tops, a few hours. And yet the chemistry between her and myself and just her and us as a, as a group and our crew was just so natural like going to uh, summer camp you know with friends from different schools around the area yeah you're only going to get five weeks together to, to go canoeing and make you know whatever you're going <laughs> to make and put on the talent show at the end whatever it was uh, it's that kind of feeling it's coming home and hanging out with really great people knowing what you're going to try to get out of them do you Brian feel that gave you the really diplomatic answer i mean in real yeah life, you're just like i we, agree we are like the girls from sex in the city we are just <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I'm only teasing. I'm only... <laughs> did you, Jeff? Did you, Jeff, kind of feel that this is the most challenging character to play in the whole of the viewer skew? In the fact that I think you had to show emotions that you didn't show in Clerks or Clerks Two. We saw heart to hearts between you and Brian in the second film a lot more towards the end in the prison scene. But on this one, we see you really open up. We see your emotions. We see heartache. Literally, uh, we see tears we see the emotions that i've never seen you put on screen and done so fucking well uh thank you so much um you know it, it's sort of we've been sort of doing a slow build to this uh the original clerks no emotion <laughs> clerks two, <laughs> no. we sort of saw it at the end and uh with clerks three we definitely saw it um but you know I, I'm not an actor. I, I don't play a ton of characters. So this is my one character that I do. Uh, but a lot of the emotions came through Kevin's writing. Uh, it, it didn't take, uh, it, it wasn't hard. I, I remember the first time I got the script and reading through the script, I, I was on my deck in the backyard, literally tearing up. Um, so it, 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 with Kevin's words and the story, it, it really wasn't hard to get there. Um, and I know, you know, watching some of Brian's scene, the, the Brian's scene in the cemetery with Rosario, just, I wasn't there for the filming, but it, uh, in watching it, it was like a gut, gut wrenching scene. So, you know, it's kind of built in there, I think. Brian, I wasn't ready for that. And, you know, I can't praise you enough. The way that you handled that scene in the graveyard. And again, at the, I don't want to spoil it, but at the cinema scene at the end, uh, you broke me, man. I'm a 40 year old man that was crying because I was not ready for that. It was dick and fart jokes for the first 20 minutes. And then it was like, buckle up. Here we go. Here's the John Hughes kind of effect. And now you're really going to be in touch with your emotions again. Yeah. I mean, uh, first off, it starts off once again is for, with Kevin's words to it. Uh, and then secondly, I got to the absolute blessed pr pleasure of working opposite of Rosario Dawson, who you cannot uh, work with her, fall in love with her in, in, in her character and not feel the pain of the loss of what that could have been or what the loss yeah. of the, the marriage that Dante would have had with Becky and the child and stuff like that. And so, and then again with, um, you know, the, the final scene in the cinema, it's once again, just the feelings of, I mean, this is like Jeff said, this is 28 years in the build of it. Um, you are emotionally invested. My, my entire career is built on what we did in the first film, what people enjoyed, what we did in the second film, and what we can bring to life and, and kind of conclude with this third film. So um, I wasn't going to take this amazing work that Kevin had put out and just treat it lightly. I was going to treat it with the respect that it deserved and the emotion that it needed to be tied to it. And, um, you know, I, I just put in the work. And one thing I noticed, and it might be deliberate, it might not, and it's something that I just saw and have been thinking about over last night, is that you're not wearing a cross in this film, and you are in Clerks 1 and Clerks 2. Is that because you've started to lose faith because of the loss of your child and because of your loss of um, Becky? Because I'm not sure many people will notice it, but it was a deliberate thing that you actually kind of chose to now kind of not believe anymore? Uh, good very eye. good, very good eye. Incredibly good eye. Uh, yes, it was an active choice. Uh, for me as the character not to have that. I mean, I literally wear it every day. So, um, yeah. So yes, it was his loss, his, his uh, loss in faith uh, in loss of just anything. Uh, you know, it broke him. It's, it's yeah. said by Becky that it broke him and it broke him in many different levels of his life. And that being one of them. Good eye, man. Good eye. And Jeff, you've been out of the scene quite a while and I see a lot of Comic Cons announced and there's always clerks panels and stuff like this. And it's only the last sort of 12 months I've seen like, oh, Jeff's actually alive. He's back on the scene and he's everywhere. <laughs> it's so good to see you out there and the fans meeting you in the photos again. Is it really nice to connect with all these people? Because most people that love Kevin Smith films, you don't like a Kevin Smith film. You either hate Kevin Smith's work or you are absolutely besotted with everything and will buy every piece of merch and be completely obsessed and these fans have probably waited a long time to actually get that final signature on their posters yeah um you know for me i i've had sort of a complex relationship with these movies only because you know i, I never intended to be an actor it was never sort of my goal so I, I i've sort of you know kept them at an arm's length away 
Um, when I decided to do Clerks 3, it was literally, I like woke up one day, I don't know what happened, maybe a head trauma. Uh, I just <laughs> decided to go ahead and do it. And when I decided to go ahead and do it, I, I at the same time said, you know what, I'm going to do the whole thing. I'm going to go out. I'm not going to take this serious. I'm going to do everything. I'm going to, I'm going to do the cons, which, you know, the cons were sort of chasing me for a little bit to do them. Um, and, and I just said, that's it. I'm doing it. When, when they sent me the contract, I didn't send it to an agent. I didn't send it to a lawyer. I literally signed it, sent it back. God knows what I have to do from here on in. Cause I didn't even you read, never read the small print, <laughs> did you? Yeah. Uh, but it's been great going out and meeting the fans. Like you said, I, I've done about, uh, you know, a year's worth of cons and uh, it is amazing. It's, it's sort of my first time interacting with fans because I don't have social media or anything. And just some of the stories and, and knowing how much the film has touched people has just truly been amazing to me. And uh, I, I'm really glad that I, I whatever that was, the epiphany, whatever, you know, prompted me to do it. I, I'm really glad for it. And, and uh, I am glad to finally get out there and meet the fans. It, it's been truly like heartwarming. He was visited by three ghosts, the ghost of Dante, yeah. Jay, and Silent Bob. <laughs> <laughs> it's also great being with him on these uh, on these conventions as well. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. We've been traveling through a lot of cities, and they are incredibly grateful that Jeff is out on the road, like you said, getting that last autograph or just getting to tell him how much that character and these movies have meant. And it's been a joy being on the road with him, and we look forward to, to more after this. You were my final piece as well, because I've interviewed everyone from Clerks. Everyone. Kevin, Jay, Brian, all of you. I've even had... Um, Marilyn? <sighs> Marilyn, yes. Uh, and you were the final piece, so I'm really glad it's actually finally happened. I'm changing my name to the final piece. Yes, do it. <laughs> uh, and with the character of Randall, obviously with the script, you've based this on the heart attack that Kevin had only a couple of years ago, which kind of... Sh shook everybody in the industry and to do it respectfully and not in this silly over the top kind of comedic heart attack you did it right and you did it in the way that you know anyone in their 40s or 50s would probably have a heart attack and just be terrified mm. did you feel a bit of pressure because you're portraying what kevin actually went through yeah i mean i don't know if pressure is the right word but like knowing like um you know in clerks one and clerks two uh brian or dante was always the kevin character uh, and it did become, uh, it, it was not lost on me that I was sort of taking on the Kevin persona in this. Um, you know, when Kevin was actually going through his heart attack, we were in touch. So I, I kind of knew what that was going on. And uh, I, I don't want to say Kevin, Kevin didn't treat his heart attack lightly, um, but also didn't sort of give it a whole lot of, uh, he didn't sort of let it run him off the tracks. He, he sort of yeah. focused with it. So knowing like sort of how Kevin went through, it really helped me to, to sort of go through it here and sort of play it like him uh, where it was a little serious, uh, but ultimately like, you know, within a couple months of him having the heart attack, he kind of shook it off and was just like, look, I, I, I've made peace with it. And whatever happens from here on in is fine, but I need to start, you know, taking steps. And that's just sort of the way I, I kind of played it. You did it unbelievably, my friend. Yeah. And now the film is actually just about to come out in the UK. But in America, what I love about it is Kev just takes it on the road. So instead of like a band you go and see, you can go and see the film, get a Q&A from the cast. I know, Brian, you've been doing a couple of nights already this week. What's it like sitting there and seeing the crowd respond when you've been kind of sat on this film for the last few months and you know that every fan is so eager to see this kind of final part of the trilogy? It must be amazing to see the, your, the kind of audience reactions each night to these amazing scenes that have stayed with me for the last few days. Um, well, with the first screening, which was the premiere in L.A. a couple of weeks ago, a lot of people from the film obviously are there, their agents, their people and stuff. And other there were fans. There were groups of fans that were in the, in the front half of the theater. You couldn't quite tell. They enjoyed it. They loved it, saying incredibly, uh, wonderfully kind and nice things to us as cast. Um, and so you kind of took that with a, with a grain of cocaine. Excuse me, salt. Um, <laughs> Hollywood. Uh, and so... <laughs> the first screenings of the convenience tour, which started in Red Bank, New, New Jersey at the Basie Theater, there was a seven o'clock screening that sold out 
immediately. They had to add a matinee, the one thirty. So myself, Marilyn Gigliotti, Kevin, a few of the other people who were from the, the, the original film that were in the area came to see it and seeing it with now, granted, this is a hometown crowd. They went bananas, caught every Jersey kind of inside joke, loved when Randall says that's the Jerseyest thing I ever saw, like <laughs> huge roar of laughter. It was very, very funny and very touching. And at the end, uh, when Kevin came out uh, to start the Q&A, uh, it was very, very nice of them to do standing ovations. Those were really nice and, and uh, uh, very kind. Um, he's since been, uh, last night he was up in Portland, Maine. I was not there for that one. Uh, tonight he's just outside of Philadelphia at the Keswick Theater. Uh, me and Marilyn Gigliotti, um, who's uh, staying with me this week, uh, is going to be down. We're going to drive down there uh, to to do that screening then we have uh, Providence, Rhode Island tomorrow night, and then finally the big New York City screening. And so far, I'm really, really happily surprised that the audiences are really, really bought into what we were putting out there and have caught all the little nuances, like yourself, catching the cross, things like that, are really have invested themselves into this movie, and I, and I couldn't be more happy and appreciative of that. There is so many nods throughout this film, obviously all the 37 and stuff like this, but even the overuse of makeup for you because of the original story behind it and there's too much on your face in one scene. All those little nods are incredible. So the big hardcore viewers you fans, it's like a pick -a mix and the best of all the little in-jokes. It's amazing. <laughs> wow, well, yeah, we are kind of a bag of candy, aren't we, the pick -a mix uh, And the film, I'm never going to reveal the ending because it's not fair, um, but what I will touch upon, and Jeff, I'd love to know your thoughts. It leaves it open if you did want to have a part four. It does. Uh, it feels like a perfect end, but it's also not completely closed. Would you be up for coming back and doing a part four, probably when you're nearly 70 years old? <laughs> yeah, I, I said I would do a part four if Randall could walk in with his walker, hand Elias and blockchain <laughs> the keys and walk right back out the door. I'd be totally for it. <laughs> you up for it. What about you, Brian? Are you up for it? As yeah, a, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, wink, wink. I, I, I think I think definitely um, I would love to see these characters fulfill the middle years of all these stories with the, a resurgence and a reboot of the Clerks animated series. I think we've become now physically a little too repulsive to be seen on camera. That I, <laughs> but vocally we still are there. So I think if we could do the cartoon series again, I'm all for it. Plus, there'd be stories that we could tell with so many characters. I'm, I'm already thinking maybe a podcast series. I could get on that, produce it. There we go. We've got ourselves a, a project. Clerks 4, exclusive to Mark and me. <laughs> <laughs> what I do on the podcast is normally ask the one guest for a song choice, which is the music to be played at the outro of the podcast. So we're at 225 episodes. We've had Anthony Hopkins. We've had Mads Mikkelsen. We've had all these different actors and actresses. And what I'm going to do is ask you both for a song choice, and then I'll mix it up and try and get both pieces of music in the episode. So Brian, what's a song that means a lot to you? It can be any band, any musician, or even a piece of music from a film that just means hell of a lot to you. That would be the perfect outro song for today's episode. Uh, God. Um, I love putting you on the spot. Yeah, you do. Um, <laughs> what's the, what's the, what's the song from you to, uh, you said you want diamonds and a ring of gold. Uh, that song by YouTube. YouTube, That's... it's got rings of gold in it. Yeah. Uh, there is a song literally called All I Want Is You. Yeah, that's it. All I Want Is there You. There you go. That's it. Perfect. Jeff, what about you? Oh, wow. Uh, I would say I would like to leave them with uh, Elvis Costello, Peace, Love, and Understanding. Oh, both incredible songs, and I'll get them both on the episode. It's not fair to try and toss a coin or make you two fight over it, but... Uh, <laughs> such great songs <laughs> hopefully guys yes. the rest of the press goes really well i really appreciate your time um jeff i've not met you before but i'm so grateful that i finally ticked that off and got you on uh, it's genuinely an absolute pleasure to have you on and brian it's so good to see you again and i know our paths will meet again in the near future thank you so there it is there's my interview with me the amazing jeff and brian from the incredible clerks free and as you heard at the start of today's interview 
Jeff for me was the final guest that I needed to complete my jigsaw from Clerks and I'm so grateful and so honoured that he gave me his time and for me personally it's a huge achievement to have got all the cast from Clerks on here and who knows what's around the corner you might get some more viewer skew guests coming up on Mark and Me very soon. We talked heavily about Clerks 3 and I can't recommend this film enough. Truly, it's my film of the year right now. It's blown me away and left me in tears. It's the perfect end to a perfect trilogy, which not many film directors can do. And it's right now going to be out in the cinemas on the 16th of September. And that's the UK too. We're not missing out like we have done in the past with some Kevin Smith films. And if you can, make that extra trip. Go that extra mile to that cinema that's showing it because it needs to be seen on the big screen. But do take tissues. I warn you now, it gets very emotional and not what you expect. I'm so flattered for everyone that's tuned in to today and all I ask for you to do is please share this on your social media networks. If you go on to markandme.com, there's Facebook, Twitter and Instagram all on there. All I ask that if you've enjoyed today's episode, hit that retweet button on Twitter, maybe post it on your stories on Instagram or share it on Facebook. You have no idea just how many people can jump on board from seeing that share and then suddenly listen to Mark and me and before you know it, I've got someone that listens each week to Mark and me. And that's marketing that I can't afford to pay for, but word of mouth is huge within the podcast community. So please, if you've enjoyed today's episode, hit that retweet button or share button. Mark and me is always going to remain free, but it's just all I ask for listening to today's episode. If you've also really enjoyed today's episode, please go on to markandme.com because on there there's a link to my Patreon page. The podcast can't continue without the support from Patreon. All you have to do, and if you're new to Patreon, it's a link that you can go on and each and every month by giving me maybe one or two pounds, I will give you a minimum of eight episodes per month. That's the minimum. On top of that, you're going to get some Patreon exclusive episodes, some incredible prizes, and thanks to my good friends at Richer Sounds, each and every month I have a fantastic prize to give away to saying thank you for giving me support. Also, when you sign up, you get an exclusive pin badge of Mark and Me. These are not available to buy. These are only for Patreon people, as well as some stickers and some other goodies. And throughout the year, I make sure I surprise my Patreons with some cool prizes and cool updates. And it's all I ask for supporting Mark and Me. I'll be back in only a few days' time with a brand new episode. Thanks again to everyone that's taken the time to listen to today's episode. And in the meantime, please look after yourself. Take care. Go and see Clerks Free. And I assure you, we are open. I'll speak to you all very soon. You see, you won't Diamonds on the ring of gold You say Your story to remain untold But all the promises we made From the cradle to the grave When all I want is you
I'm not even supposed to be here today. Oh, fuck you.